Hi, this is Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. Today I'm going to show you how I make wooden window sash here in our shop using the Infinity Standard Window Sash Router Bit Set. Before we get started, I want to take a second to talk about the different parts of the window. In this case, the entire thing is known as the window sash. The two vertical pieces that make the sides of the window are known as the styles. The top and bottom piece of the window sash are known as the rails. And the division bars that divide the pieces of glass are known as the mutton or mutton bars. Now that we know what all the pieces of our window sash are called, we're ready to determine the length, width, and thickness of those pieces. I know that my window sash needs to be 1 and 3 eighths of an inch thick. The Infinity Standard Window Sash Set will allow you to make windows from 1 and 3 eighths to 1 and 5 eighths of an inch thick, so this is an important dimension. I also know that I need my sash to measure 18 inches wide by 24 inches long and that my rails and styles need to measure two and a quarter inches wide. My mutton bars also need to measure three quarters of an inch wide. Now that I know those dimensions, I can go about figuring out how long all my pieces need to be. My styles are easy. They're the full length of the window, so they're going to be 24 inches long. My rails and horizontal mutton bars need to be a bit shorter because they're housed within the styles. To figure out how long those need to be, I take the overall width of the window, which is 18 inches, and subtract two and a quarter from each side, which is four and a half, and that gives me 13 and a half inches. Now I need to add back the dimension of my profile, which is a quarter inch on each side, which gets me back out to 14 inches, and then I need to add the length of the tenon on each side. For my window, it's one inch, which is two inches, giving me an overall length of my rail and horizontal mutton bar of 16 inches. I can use the same formula to figure out how long my vertical mutton bar needs to be. In my case, on a 24 inch tall window, it will be 22 inches long. The final thing we need to determine before we head over to the table saw is where in our rails and mutton bars our tenon needs to be. To determine this, I work from the back side of the window. I know that my window needs to have a half inch deep rabbit to hold my glass, so I know that the back of the tenon also needs to be one half of an inch from the surface of my rails and styles. I also know that my tenon needs to be one quarter of an inch thick, which means that it needs to be five eighths of an inch from the face of the window on my one and three eighths of an inch thick sash. I'm ready to start cutting the tenons in my rails and mutton bars. To do this, I'm over here at the table saw and I'm gonna be using an Infinity Dado Nader Dado Set. I've got roughly a full stack on the saw and I've got my fence set to one inch. Remember we decided we wanted a one inch long tenon, so the fence setting is going to determine that length. I also have my dado set for a five eighths inch deep cut, and this is going to be the cut on the face side of our rails and muttons. With those settings, I'm ready to start making my tenons. Now that the first cut is made, I'm ready to lower my dado set to a half inch depth of cut. I'm leaving my fence setting the same and I can cut now the back side of my tenons and create that quarter inch thick tenon.
final step in creating our tendon is to leave the dado and the fence exactly where they are. Simply turn the rail up on edge and dado away a half of an inch from the width of our tenon. With my tenons cut, I'm ready to lay out the location of my mortises. I can use the tenon itself to locate the ends of my mortises, and I'm going to use a wheel marking gauge to help define the sides of my mortises. So I'm referencing off of the edge to make sure I'm located in the correct place, and I'm marking the ends of my mortise. Now I'm going to use the tenon to set up my wheel marking gauge for the face of my rail. Then I can use the back side of my tenon to set up and mark the opposite side. Okay, now I can mark out the area for my waist. I can use the same procedure to mark out the location of the mortises for my muttons. And mark the waist with an X. To make my mortises, I'm over here at the drill press. I'm using a 7 seconds diameter drill bit. That'll leave me just a little bit on each side of my mortise to clean up with a chisel. I've set up a quick fence to support my workpiece, so I make sure that I have my holes drilled down the center line of my mortise, and I've set my depth of drilled hole to one and a quarter inches deep. This will ensure that I have the right depth mortise for my tenons. To finish up my mortises, I'm using a couple different sizes of Narex bench chisels and a mortise chisel to clean out the waste. I also have my tenon here handy so I can use it to check the fit as I go. I've got a scrap piece of plywood. I'm going to use this as a zero clearance fence for making my cope cuts on the ends of my rails and mutton bars. What this allows me to do is support my tenon as I pass it through. Because the tenon 
is so far from the face that we're cutting, I want to be able to support that piece all the way through the cut. We're ready to make our cope cuts at the router table. I've got my coping bit set up in the router and I'm going to use the tenon that we created at the table saw to set the bit height. I want to make sure that the cutter just brushes the underside of my tenon. I'm also using my sacrificial fence which will support the end of my tenon and to set that fence setting I'm going to use my square and ensure that the bit is one and a quarter inches from the fence. This will give me the correct cope depth. Finally I'm going to be using my miter gauge to support my workpiece as I feed it through. If for some reason my fence is not parallel to my miter track, I can make an adjustment on my miter gauge to ensure that my tenon is square to the fence. And because I'm using my sacrificial fence, as long as I ensure that my tenon stays in contact, I know that I'm going to get the proper depth of cut. I'm also going to be using a backer block to help ensure that I don't get any blowout at the exit of the bit. Before I take my coping cutter out of the router, I want to bring my fence forward to make a quarter inch deep cut and I want to use a piece of scrap material that's the same thickness as my window sash and about eight inches longer than my styles. I'm going to make a cope cut and this is going to become a push block and a miter block for working on our mutton bars. To finish up my push block, I need to remove this small square of material from above or below the cope cut. I'm going to use the tenon from one of my rails to show me how tall that cut needs to be. It's actually going to be a perfect quarter inch, same as the tenon. I have an infinity quarter curve flat top blade set up in the table saw and I'm ready to remove that bit of material. To finish up my push block, I need to first cut about 8 inches off of the end and then miter both sides of that off cut piece. This is going to be a tool to make it very easy to make the miters for the intersection of our mutton bars. I also need to take my push block and add a hook to the end of it so that when I put my mutton bar in place it hooks into that push block and it will also create a little zero clearance insert the first time I use it. I'm ready to set up to make the profile cut in all my pieces. I've put my profile or sticking bit into the router and I'm going to use the top of my tenon to set the bit height. When the rabbiting cutter brushes the top of the tenon on the back side of my rails and styles, I know that the bit is set to the proper height. I can then use a ruler and the bearing at the center of the bit to set my fence. With that, I'm ready to make the cuts in all my pieces. I've used a couple pieces of double-sided tape to stick my mutton bar to the flat side of my push block and I'm ready to make my cut.
the first step in making the joint between the mutton bars is to make a quarter inch groove across the profile portion of the mutton bar. To make this groove, I'm going to be using an infinity flat top blade at the table saw. And I'm going to be using my miter gauge to support the workpiece as I feed it through the blade. With my notches cut in my mutton bars, I'm back over here at the workbench. I have my push block clamped in my vise on my bench, and it's holding my mutton bar. And I have my 45 degree angle block that I made earlier clamped to the top of my mutton bar. I've positioned it so that the 45 degree angle just meets the inside edge of the notch I just made. I'm ready to simply pare away the excess material to create my 45 degree miter. I know I'm done when my miter meets the bottom of my notch. The final step in creating the joint in our muttons is to make a notch halfway through our mutton bars. On one side we need to cut from the face and on the other side cut from the back. With that last cut, our muttons should be ready to go together. Let's give them a try. There we go. If the joint is a little tight and doesn't want to go together, take your time, go back to the bench and use the miter block and your chisel to fine tune the fit. The final step in finishing up our styles is to remove this little block of material at the end of our mortise. To do this, I could use a back saw, a fine toothed hand saw, or simply grab a sharp chisel. With all of our joinery cut, we're ready to do a dry fit and final assembly. After that, all that's left is your finish of choice and we're ready for glass. If you're interested in making windows that are thinner than one and three eighths of an inch, we have a router bit set specifically for that. It's the Infinity Window Sash Junior Router Bit Set and you can stay tuned for a video specifically for the differences in construction between using that bit set and the standard Infinity Window Sash Router Bit Set. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog for even more information on the projects we make and the tools we use here in the Infinity Tools Shop.